do you put that season down to? Um, yeah, it's funny. I get, I've been asked that question a few times, and um, look, I think the the biggest thing for me, and I think the biggest thing for anyone in in whether it be sport or life, is if you enjoy something, um, you, you tend to get a lot out of it. And I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the years before that, but I think for me, I just let go of a lot of control and um, released a lot of things that were, um, you know, a lot of anxiety that I was, um, you know, we whether it be performers or trying to be perfect in certain areas and. Uh, for me, it was just going out there and enjoying myself and um, and being vulnerable and um, and going out there and whatever happened, happened. And, uh, and that seemed to work pretty well. And um, at the end of the day, I just enjoyed every game I played. There was games where I didn't play so well and or, or we lost. But uh, I said to Pep at the start of the year, no matter how we play or what the result is, we'll come home and we'll have a smile on our face. And, and that's, that's sort of the mantra we sort of had for the whole year. And um, that sort of made it an enjoyable. Um, I think we sort of learnt that we're more than just a footballer, we're a human as well and um, we enjoyed life and we enjoyed football. Was it giving up the captaincy that helped to give you that enjoyment back? Um, I think it was a part of it. I think it forced me to let go of a lot of control. I think um, when I was captain I tried to be the, the perfect leader, the perfect player, made sure I was the right role model for everyone and uh, I think when you get into that space you, you sort of lose, lose who you are a little bit um, and you don't natu- you go there and be your natural self. and. I think that sort of forced me to step away from that a little bit and just go out there and be me as a person. And um, so, in a way, I was sort of thankful for, for learning that lesson and um, and going on that journey. And uh, I'd love to continue to help lead the club forward with with Ollie and TJ and, and help where I can. But it sort of certainly forced me into a direction where um, you know you, you focus on the things that you, you can control rather than the things you can't. Isn't that interesting, though, that when you give up the pressure of trying to be a role model to someone, you actually end up being a role model to everyone? Yeah, I think that's the, the case, certainly, with, um, you know, it can be footy, it can be business, it can be life. Um, we can certainly try so hard to be perfect at, at something or try and be the perfect person or, um, you know, try and get something that we really want in life, where at the end of the day, you just got to enjoy the small things and be grateful for what you do have. and. Um, and that seems to sort of let go of a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure, and you go out there and be yourself, and, and that's where things happen. You mentioned the co-captains before. Do you think that worked this year, and will it continue, do you think? Oh, look, I'm not sure if it'll continue or not, whether that's um, you know the direction of um, our playing group where we're at or, or, the, or what we want as a, as a footy group. I certainly think it, it worked this year. They were, they were the two that were best to lead the club. Uh, I think they did a, a great job for those two together. I, I know that they faced a lot of a lot of challenges. Ollie faced a lot personally with his injuries and and those two together with a lot of probably backlash from a lot of people and uh, whether it be media and supporters and those two went out there and did the best job they could to lead this footy club and I couldn't be more proud of what they did and um, they're extremely good leaders and they'll continue to learn as leaders of this footy club and um, you know I'm, I'm extremely confident that they'll they'll go forward whether it's together or one of them um, in the future that they'll, they'll lead this club really well. Where's your shoulder at looking at the uh, well, I'm still meant to be in a sling, but I've taken it off for the suit tonight. Um, so I've got one more week in a sling, and I can start. Um, I can start my rehab on that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, what did it's, they do? Can you kind of explain? Uh, so I end up, um, yeah, I tore a couple of tendons in my shoulder, which um, we didn't know until until I went in for surgery. So um, yeah, that was interesting. But look, it's it's part of footy. I've been very fortunate with injuries, and um, look, I'm, I'm I'm excited for for the journey of, of recovery. It's um it's another challenge for me to face and something I probably haven't faced too much before in the past and uh, I've got great people um, within the club and, and in my support group as well that can help me on that journey and I'll come back to pre-season day one ready to go and, and I know I'll be ready to go round one um, you know hopefully for a better year. David Kosh singled you out um, you know for big praise um, said that in the darkest times you decided to stick by Port Adelaide did you ever consider leaving the club? Uh, oh, look, I think there was there was certainly thoughts of going back to my family. There's look, I won't shy from that. There's um, you know my, all my family were back in Geelong, and um, you know it, it's it was it was certainly a challenging time for me leaving my family. And I've always um, you know fought those demons of leaving, and, and um, you know to, to to have the chance to go back, there was certainly a pull there. But um, in the end, the, it was never about it was never about footy. It was never about going back to another footy club. Whether it was about money, it was. This is the club that I love. This was part of my, part of who I am. And um, for anyone who walks into this club, anyone who's spoken about this club, been involved in this club, we'll talk about the family that this club is. And I was a part of that. And look, I wasn't the only one. There was, you know, Robbie, Jacko, and these sort of guys at the time that 
that knew exactly the same thing. It was, it was the worst time in our club's, you know, arguably the worst time in our club's history to, um, you know, where we're at on and off the field and, um, you know, for those guys to, to stay around and, and to try and lead that club forward. Um, it's a lot easier to walk away from something um, that's not going so well. So for those guys to do it and, and be a part of that and to be able to turn around to where it is today, um, you know, it's pretty special. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So won it in 2011 with Jacko, second time around this time, and to win it outright yourself. Does it, is it different? Does it feel different? Does it mean more to you being, a bit, I guess, a bit more mature this time around? Um, I think I think I'll look back on it and be be really proud of it. Um, I think, you know, obviously being 31, over the last couple of years a lot of people have ripped me off saying I wasn't good enough and um, I shouldn't be in the best 22 and um, look, you hear those things and um, you know, they sort of not necessarily motivated me to change or, or, or to, to do anything different but um, I wanted to go out there and prove myself that I, I, was, I was still capable and um, you know, for me the, the journey I'm most proud of is, is, is putting in the work, it's not so much winning the medal or um, you know, playing well on game day. It's the work that I put in, the preparation I put in, knowing that um, I've given myself the best opportunity to be the best person, the best player I can be. And uh, I still think I'm, I'm unfinished. There's still a lot of that, you know, that I feel like I've, I've got left, and I'm excited for that journey. How much longer? How, how much? How long can you go on if you're still feeling great? I, I love, I love the game. I love the club. Um, I still love playing. My body still feels great. Um, and. I, just, I, I, don't, I know that the more I keep putting back in, the more that my body will just keep rewarding me. So um, the biggest thing for me is, is continuing to enjoy the work. Uh, I know I'll love footy probably for a long time, but it's, uh, I think it's continuing to enjoy the work that I put in. And that's, that's my favourite part of, of being an athlete is the work that you put in. And um, I'll continue to enjoy that. And, and until I stop loving that, I'll keep playing. What's it going to mean to you to play in the 150th next year? Oh, look, it's going to mean a lot to me and a lot of a lot of the players here. Certainly, um, you know, sort of a lot of the, the more senior players as well that have been around a while that that really are entrenched into this club's history. And um, there's there's just so much that goes into it. The um, you know the, the proud past of the premierships and and the connection and the way that the club played to the fight to go into the AFL, uh, the first premiership. Um, and then to, to go through what we have over the last uh, decade has, has been huge for this footy club and um, to now celebrate the 150 years of, of this incredible footy club and to be a part of that and is, is a great honour um, and we're excited to, to put on that Guernsey round one next year um, in the 150th year. It's going to be uh, an extraordinary experience. What are your plans for the off season now? Um, it's really hot in here, I'm just like sweating Sorry. up. <laughs> um, uh, off season will be uh, pretty similar to what it has been over the last three or four years. Um, I'll head over to, to LA in a couple of weeks to enjoy some sport over there and um, uh, NBA mainly. Yeah. Um, so no see NFL. NFL. I'll definitely check out some NFL. The, the LA Rams over there, which nice. are, which are one of the teams I like. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching the Lakers, which will be nice opening night hopefully. Um, so get over there. Uh, enjoy some time with some friends and, um, and some of the boys are going over as well and then um, the two weeks at the back end of that I'll train over in Santa Cruz and uh, there's a few boys coming over this year which will be exciting to, to train with them and, and then we'll come back and, and get into pre-season. Can I also just ask you, I'm sorry, this is going on a long time. Right. Um, uh, you seem to have a special relationship with Michael Voss. You, was it he that you call up when you've read a good book? Is that right? Yeah, so um, I think... Um, we, me and Vossi connected as soon as he came over. He um, he took over as a midfield coach, and it's funny. The um, and I spoke to him about this because he, he took over after Phil Walsh, and, and I was really really close with Phil, and and it was really hard to let go of of what Phil had taught me. <coughs> Sorry, as a person and as a player and as a midfield coach, and Vossi was completely different to Phil. And that first year with Vossi, um, you know, I bought into everything he wanted to do, but we had that little bit of oh, like I can't let go of Phil in a way. And we spoke about that at the end of that year. And um, it was a really open conversation. And, and I think we connected in, in terms of um, a lot of leadership stuff and, and who we are as people. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I know. Can we cut that out? Oh, brilliant. Um, so we, yeah, we connected, um, I guess, on the basis of, of leaders and, um, and, and what we believed in as people. and. And now even further in what we want to do with this footy club in, in building a lot of connection and um, we're reading a lot of the same books and um, we sort of bounce off each other with a lot of ideas and 
Um, if I read a good little line in a book, I'll send it straight through to him and, and we sort of debrief that and, and talk about that. So we have a great relationship and Vossi's been um, you know, certainly great for me over the last last little period of time as a coach and as a mentor and as, as certainly as a, as, a, as a leader. He was a fantastic leader and when I was captain, it certainly helped me a lot. So yeah, we do have a good relationship. Can I please ask you then, what good books have you read this year? <laughs> um, so the best, I, I've never been a reader, I hate reading. Uh, until I read a lot of Brene Brown stuff. I uh, don't know if you heard much about her stuff, but um, she talks a lot about uh, vulnerability um, and certainly uh, a lot of judgment and, and being yourself. Um, and that's certainly where I learned a lot of, of letting go of, of expectations and, and who I think I need to be and just be who I am. Um, so I've read a lot of her stuff and that's certainly helped me a lot to, to just be myself and not really care what anyone else thinks or what happens. Um, you know, we're still very, worthy as people, um, you know, not just as a footballer and that certainly helped me a lot and, and Vossi has, has been on the same same page and we've sort of shared a lot of that and we're trying to bring a lot of that into the footy club as well.